My parents are Suzanne Fry Ludkemeyer and John Alexander Ludkemeyer Jr. And on each side of the family, there was always talk about one particular ancestor. On my dad's side, he heard a story from his grandmother, Granny Lemoyne, about one of our Lemoyne ancestors. And that he, his house was a stop on the Underground Railroad. So that's good family lore. Could be, could be a load of malarkey. And on my mom's side of the family, there was my uh, great-grandfather, who was known as Big Charlie. Charles Daniel Fry, the elder, was an illustrator for the Chicago Post. He died before I was born, so I never met him, but I remember visiting his apartment in Chicago. Very glamorous, with smoked mirrors and um, black and white marble floors and two grand pianos. I know that he was German, but I didn't know anything else about him. History is history, and we can't deny where we came from. I wouldn't be psyched to claim slave owners or Nazis as my ancestors, but I am neither. And should they pop up in the past, that would be really sad, but it's real, and I would like to know about it. History is important because it will repeat itself unless we know about it. And so in anything I can find out, I want to find out. So I'm gonna start with my mom's side of the family. And to help me with that, my mom actually sent me the obituary for my great-grandfather, Big Charlie. Uh, this was in the Chicago Tribune on November 12th, 1959. Okay, so Charles Daniel Fry, 73, newspaper man, advertising executive, and artist died Wednesday in Wesley Memorial Hospital. He was a pioneer in the Chicago advertising field. Mr. Fry began his own agency here in 1910 after working for the Chicago Examiner and the Post. Mr. Fry served in World War I. I didn't know that. He was born in 1886 in Denver. I'm looking forward to finding out more about Big Charlie. He's always been, you know, the artist in the family, and um, everybody else was not, didn't sound nearly as exotic or exciting. I'm looking forward to going to Chicago to find out more about him. To get started, I sent what little I know about Big Charlie to a genealogist, and she asked me to meet her at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. <sighs> so pretty. Gorgeous. Hi. Nice to meet you. I am here today to find out about Big Charlie. I'd love to get some answers about how he came to be in Chicago, starting in Denver. I think what we should do is start with his origins in Denver. He indicated he was born in 1886. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we should go to Ancestry. Okay. Normally, what we would do is go to the closest census to his birth, but the 1890 census was burned. So let's look at the 1900 United States federal census. This one? Yes. Charles Daniel Fry. Year uh, of his birth. The year of his birth was 18... 86 in Denver. And there you are. Is that him right there? Date of birth, 1886? Right. But that's spelled differently. Right. The census enumerator probably uh -huh. spelled it phonetically. Oh, okay. Oh my God, it's so cool. Okay. Charles was born November 1886. Right. And so he's 13 at the time of this census. And there's Daniel Fry, head of the family. That would be Big Charlie's dad, my great-great-grandfather. What's the, what's the information at the very top? Oh, place of birth of this person, of the father of this person, the mother of this person. Okay, now I know what I'm looking at. So Big Charlie's father, he was from New York. His parents were from Germany, and he was a plumber. Plumber? Didn't know about that. There was, those are humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. What would have led Big Charlie, Charlie, to uh, Chicago, and when? 
If he wanted to be an artist, there would be limited opportunities and training in, in Denver. Denver. Right. You'd either need to come to Chicago or to New York. I have a page from the 1908 Chicago City Directory. In 1908, when he would have been 22. Correct. And this is Charles D. Daniel, artist. There he is, post H. Illinois Athletic Club. Does, when it says post, though, that just means he gets his mail here? No, post is the name of a Chicago newspaper. So that it's his, it's his place of employment. It's his Got place of it. employment. Okay. Yeah, on city directories, place of employment first and then where the oh. residence is. So he lived at the Illinois Athletic Club. Right. Now, the significance of this room is this building was the Illinois Athletic Club. He uh, went from Denver to here? Right, this is the Illinois Athletic Club. This was the main dining room. Wow. You see the, the IAC? Oh, that's the Illinois still... Athletic Club, okay. So he's come here, he's an artist at the post. And in the early 1900s, men's clubs were a big thing. They had lodging, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. for men. They could take their meals, exercise, athletic club. Mm -hmm. But it's an, also an outstanding standing opportunity for networking because you've got heads of manufacturing right. firms and newspapers the bankers whatever right. so if you are a young man that is trying to make his mark in chicago this is the perfect place to live do we know how we got here like you don't get to just knock on the door right you don't get a knock on the door in 1908 the membership fee was a hundred dollars that's high in today's money, that would be about $2,500. Uh-huh. The average hourly wage for someone in the publishing industry during that time is 42 cents an hour. Oof. So the fact that Big Charlie made uh, joining this club a priority means that he looked at career and connection as a priority. I mean, he was an up-and-comer. He was not going to be a, a plumber's son from Denver forever. Mm -hmm. But he was young. I mean, he's 1908. We, we said he's like 22. And then in his obituary, it says that he starts his own advertising agency in 1910. So two years later. Two years later. That's like he's really young to do all that, right? He is ambitious and age isn't going to be a an issue for yeah. him. This might help fill in some of the blanks as far as Charlie starting the business. Selected writings of Albert Hubbard, 100 Point Men. This is written about 1912, which would be two years after Charles founded the, the company. Through Charles Daniel Fry, there he is. Putting art into commerce is one of the big important tasks of today. It is responsible for a new industry, advertising illustration. And the big bright light in this new industry is the Charles Daniel Fry Company's organization. The dynamo that makes the wheels go round is Charles Daniel Fry. This is the type of art we're talking about. Oh, wow. And the upper right hand corner says Charles Daniel Fry company advertising Chicago. So what you have here is a huge transformation in advertising. Before this time period, they would show you the product, and right. this is what it's going right. to do for you. This is putting you into a lifestyle. It's also really cool. <laughs> it is. Yeah. He's the poster boy for that American dream and accomplishing it.